What up, ladies? Leon Trotsky here, bringing you some more Battlefield Bad Company 2. You know how we do. Keeping it real, as always. And today, as you can probably already see if you clicked on this one, we got a long one for you. If you clicked on it by accident, I'll give you a reason to watch the whole one. I'll give you a few reasons to watch the whole one. Where to begin? Let's explain this game, first of all. This game is obviously Conquest, and it's obviously on Arca Harbor. If you know that. And this was the first game... Of the day, yeah, first game of the day, and this was an afternoon game. If any of you guys know me, you know, or play with me very often, you know I don't play in the early afternoons very much, but I was playing today, and yeah, first game, so it took me a little bit to warm up. So, as you can see here, I, in the very beginning, I miss a few shots and I play kind of can be bitchy, but we'll get out of that soon enough. But there is a reason for playing like this, and that probably has to do with the map that we're on, Arca Harbor, which is one of my favorite conquest maps, and there's a few reasons for it. Um, one, the changes of in, in elevation in the three different sides. You know, you got the, the high side, the middle, and then the low side. Um, you got the high sniper points on each, you know, from each base, the construction sites and the high hill. Um, you know, there's no vehicles, a lot of small buildings. There's just, you know, long lines, long lines of sight. There's so many reasons that I like this map. Um, my biggest strategy that I have for this map, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this video, is just military strategy. We'll get to that in a second. Strategies for this map, first of all, are, you know, controlling the high side, as well as obviously taking the objective. In this beginning part here, it's important to get these guys on the top portion of this map, because obviously in any military, you know, point of view, you want to have the higher, higher ground. It is much more advantageous to have the higher ground. So here you see me getting the highest ground I can get quickly out of our spawn, running up this alpha side hill. And it looks kind of campy and stuff, and I pick a few guys off, and I, like I said, I was just warming up, so I can miss quite a few shots in this. But, you know, that, that's something else I want to talk about, the SV-98 gameplay. Some people seem to hate on it, especially in montages, and I love running with a sniper rifle. I, you know, you guys see me playing, I try not to do it as much anymore. I have a ton of kills, you know, 3,000 or so kills with this sniper rifle, and I just love it. I run the regular scope, I still try and be aggressive, but I still like the regular scope for these longer shots that you can still hit with it, as opposed to the four times. But some people just don't like seeing it anymore. I love it, I love seeing it just because it's that... It's a thrill of killing somebody in one shot and just taking them out and like, ending that guy's life. You don't have to get in a gunfight with him. You don't have to, you know, get the majority of your bullets into him. It's just taking that shot and taking his life. It, there's something about it that's just a ton of fun in these first-person shooter games, especially when you're all the way across the map and you headshot somebody like that. Muchos, muchos fun. But um, this, this game, there's a lot of fun. You should watch it because we're going to talk about something cool, which is The Art of War by Sun Tzu. You should watch it because this game is a very close conquest game. Comes down, I believe, less than 50 tickets win. Um, I get some crazy ass sniper rifle shots, a couple good ass clips that were probably close to montage worthy. Um, some great drag scopes. If you like sniper shots, you should definitely watch this. I get a, like almost 40 kills, almost 2.0 KD. Um, other reasons to watch this game, to stay watching it. My sexy voice, obviously, that's a big plus. <laughs> um, Let's see here. It's just it's just a good good amount of fun. Obviously, I miss some stuff. There's some good teabaggery going on with somebody who tries to goose stop me, and I get him, and then he does get me back. I'll give it to him, you know. And it's it's a friendly teabag between another level 50. I mean, not so friendly because I was a little pissed because he was trying to take me out with an RPG, and then I, you know, outplayed him with a sniper rifle like a boss. But we'll let that get to it as it is. But I hope you guys stick around and watch this gameplay because it's a lot of fun. It is long. I know how it goes. If you're a new subscriber, guys, they're not always going to be like this. If you like them like this, I'm sorry. They're not always going to be like this. 25 minutes, it gives me plenty of time to talk about this topic, which I think will be a lot of fun. And it gives you plenty of time to watch, you know, a full game of sniper gameplay. Because not too many people post this, because sometimes it's tough to get a very good game of recon gameplay. And maybe it's people don't post anymore, but, you know, it seems to be a lot of montage stuff that you see with sniper stuff. So we'll change it up, and this is the full gameplay of sniper rifle. I think I got lightweight magnum ammo, if you didn't notice already, MP443. Probably my favorite setup, but I got platinum on both of these weapons, but I still love using them, so. And 10 round clip, oh, oh, it does well, but guys, we'll get into that, and I'll let you guys enjoy it. If you want to comment on the gameplay below, let me know. But let's talk about something real. Let's talk about life, guys. And life, if you don't know about my life, I was a history major, so I love historical stuff. I love stuff that's been around for a long time. And the topic today is something that you can learn lessons from, and it's been around for five 5,000 BC, 7,000 years, 6, 7,000 years, you know, and it's gone through, you know, like any, any book, any piece of human history that's gone through that much years, usually has had some manipulation, whether it be weather, whether it be personal changes to the text that you're now reading, you know, 
be it whatever it may be, there's always changes, interpretations, critiques, tons of good stuff about it. What we're talking about today, if you don't already know, is the art of war. And if you don't know what that is, now you're going to know, because it's freaking awesome. It's a, it's the oldest military treatise in the world. It's from ancient China, if you couldn't tell from the text. It was written by Sun Tzu. And it is very interesting. It is still read to this day by many different people in many different professions. And there's many different lessons that you can learn from this book. And that's why it's so interesting. And, you know, in a way, it's it's interesting like the Bible. And it's not just, you know, military. Like, obviously, there's a lot of military strategy in it. And it's really, you know, some of the, some of the parts that he talks about is a very in-depth military strategy. And you also got to think about what translation you're reading from and stuff like that. But that's another story that we'll get into in a second. You just got to realize... It's a different time that they're coming from. You know, these are before guns. These are, you know, samurais. These are no lines of communication. This is really old stuff that this guy is advising. Sun Tzu was essentially advising a king at the time. Because you also have to put this text in, if you don't know much about Chinese history, which I assume most of you don't, is Chinese history is very diverse, first of all. Um, people don't realize, you know, China nowadays, it's a huge country with a ton of people, and it seems somewhat peaceful, you know, but they've been through their shit, man, they've been through, you know, we've only been around, what, a couple hundred years, and had, you know, one revolution, and a civil war, and, you know, some social unrest, those guys have been around for a long time, <laughs> and, and they've had social culture for a long time, and that culture has changed a lot over that time, but there's been similarities that have passed on and have, you know, created the Chinese culture that we have today. So, you, Chinese history is usually broken up into different periods, and without getting into, you know, all the different periods and time that Chinese history has, uh, you know, there's a bunch of different dynasties taking over different dynasties, invaders come in, they build walls, all sorts of shit going on. Some of the most important, though, were the Warring States period, in which the Warring States, you know, it exactly how it sounds. It's China broke down into a bunch of different states ruled by individual leaders, and they were at war, and the powerful warlords won, and then eventually somebody unified it all. You know, it's kind of how it goes in those situ situations, and Sun Tzu was, this, this text is, a, it's generally accepted that it originated around that time. It, it, I mean, it kind of makes sense having a military treatise originate, but there's been many interpretations and many revisions to it. Um, and you also got to understand that this is written in Chinese, so anytime that something is written in another language, it also presents the, you know, challenge of translating that into a language you understand, whether, you know, it be English or something else. So what you're actually understanding is a little bit different from the meaning that they're expressing, but you can still get a general understanding of the message that they're conveying through most of the passages. Uh, the other important note uh, before we get started in this is, you know, I, is, uh, I don't know what it is, the translation that you're reading from. The translation that I'm reading from is, yeah, I mean, if any of you guys have a, a Kindle, or I have a, what is this, a new Sprint, uh, the Sprint 4G uh, Android phone, and you get the Amazon Kindle app, you can get a lot of books for free, and this Art of War is one of them, but the translation they have is probably the oldest English translation available. Uh, it's from 1913 by Lionel Giles, apparently. 1910, excuse me, by Lionel Giles. Um, there was also one done in 1988 by R.L. Wing. But, and I also have a copy of uh, the book, uh, a book copy of, in 1996, Ralph e. Sawyer's version of that. Um, some of the quotes that, and they're different, interesting, you know, it's interesting to read the comparisons. It's just different fancy words, you know what I mean? It's this and that, but it's all saying the same stuff. I've read different translations of it. It's all similar, and you get the similar feeling from it. But it's interesting when you compare it not only to your life, but to battle. And you start thinking about the way the game is played, the way people are strategies that you need to employ when you go into the game, this and that. It, it, it's very interesting hearing this stuff, and it just made me think a lot, because I, you know, I like flipping through stuff, and I like thinking about strategies. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have been around and subbed on my channel for a while. I said the book that I loved, if you guys like military strategy, Guns of August. Oof, well, World War One, Pulitzer Prize winner. Definitely pick that up. But, let's get into this stuff, guys. Art of War. My favorite quote from the Art of War. Now, obviously, this is the translation that I'm reading it from. And I'm not going to give you page numbers or anything like that. You guys can find it on your own if you really want specifics. First of all, I'm going to put all these uh, little bullet points. I'm going to try and put them in the description. We'll see how that actually works out. But 
we'll begin the basic stuff if you know the enemy and you know yourself you need not fear the result of a hundred battles if you know yourself but not the enemy for every victory gained you will also suffer defeat. and it makes sense you really need to have battlefield knowledge not like I had right there where I just got stabbed. But I'm going to blame that on somebody else there because I remember Cash is walking into my room at one point totally ruining my concentration and getting run up and knifed. And also I was playing with a bunch of randoms and there was nobody communicating or seeing anybody slipping down that whole backside like this sniper right in the beginning could have easily spotted that guy and I would have seen him. But anyways, anyways, we'll get to that as we go along. I'm going to point out little things in the game possibly, but I'm going to try and stick to the points. I am going to make my own points on some of these quotes, but... I think you'll get the gist. Now you know, probably one of the most important thing to remember, like always, all warfare is based on deception. It's a pretty general rule. All warfare is based on deception because, I mean, just think about it in battlefield terms. You gotta move around. When a chopper's, you know, say you're playing defense, a chopper's, you know, sitting up on the back, they're just, you know, kind of disguising, drawing your attention away, you're afraid that people are gonna jump out, spawn on that chopper, they're, you know, chopper horned up. A couple people can sneak quiet in, plant the bomb sites, and you're distracted. It's all based fainting one way, going another. It's just little practices of deception. If you ever saw my commentary on ruse, pretty interesting stuff. It's all about doing ruses or acts of deception so they don't know exactly what's going on in your battlefield. It's a real uh, RTS game, a World War, I don't know. World War II RTS game, a lot of fun. When able to attack, we must seem unable. When using our forces, we must seem inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. When far away, we must make him believe we are near. Once again, deception and not allowing the enemy to know what you're doing. Like getting on the UAV, when you know an enemy might be near, this guy freaking goosed off me. It's the same guy I'm going to teabag later when he tries to goose off me and misses me and I snipe him. So, it begins. It begins. But I kind of gave it away. I wasn't deceiving him at all. You need to hold out baits to entice the enemy feign disorder and then crush him you know perhaps if you put up a chopper and then rush in with a tank all your all the engineers are going to be pushed to the back trying to control the chopper they're going to be looking up trying to take down that chopper tank rolls in once again obviously communication on the other side will probably change the battle but wait, you know what deception give him a bait give him a little taste you know peek around the corner a second go around the corner a different way shoot him in the back works every time if he is secure at all points, be prepared for him. If he is in superior strength, evade him. Obviously, you can't run away in a battlefield game, but you do need to know when to choose your engagement. And you need to know when to pick your battle. It, it's basic rules. If he, if he is secure at the very front and he's got a great front line, you got to figure out a way to get around it. you got to figure out a way to flank. You don't want to keep running into a meat grinder. You know, especially on maps like, I'm thinking like Vietnam Vantage Point where there's a lot of choke points. Don't just keep going in. You gotta figure out a way to get around them. To take people head on with the same tactics that they're holding you down with, the defender's gonna have the advantage because they're already in the position and they know exactly where you're coming from. Change up where you're coming from. If they're superior in strength, you know, this could be looked at two different ways. Yeah, superior in strength in the numbers of the team, superior in strength in the rank. Obviously, you know, sometimes you, you gotta quit out. If it's 10 on 1, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna take a 10 on 1 beating. If it's 10 50s in a room, and I'm on a team, you know, and there's like 7 people on my team, and 5 of them are under level 20, and it starts getting raped, I'm gonna back out. You know, it happens, it happens. You're gonna evade him. If he is taking his ease, though, give him no rest. Don't give them a chance to sit back, feel comfortable, keep on them. And that's one of the th reasons I like a sniper, is that you can keep people uncomfortable. You can hit them one time. Sometimes it's great to use like a Type 88 or SVU, especially the SVU because it's silenced. But, you know, you hit a sniper with the SVU once, they're uncomfortable. They're not going to feel comfortable where they are. They're probably going to escape. Give him no rest. If his forces are united, separate them. Always a great Attack him where he is unprepared. Appear where you are not expected. Like, again, you don't want to run into the meat grinder. And you want to be able to catch the enemy also, off guard. Deceive, 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 deceive. Don't go where he's going to expect you. Obviously, if you're playing a video game for kills, and you want to pad your KD, and be a little fag, then go ahead, run into the meat grinder, and you'll probably in Battlefield get killed more times than not. But that's okay, you can have your chance of just taking the enemy head on. 
you just are not going to be using military strategy that's very good and going to allow you to move, win more times than not. So do, do whatever you think is best, but I'll give you the thing that's worked the best over time, right? <laughs> history, you can learn how to hit uh, stories from history, like being able to know when somebody's going to goose dive you and then teabagging the shit out of him because he's a little bitch. <laughs> but he gets me back, but he gets me back, right? Uh, let's see, where are we here, ladies? Um, these military devices leading to victory must not be divulged beforehand. Don't give away strategies. Don't keep using the same tactics. If somebody knows your job, do something different. Basically, the idea there. The general who wins a battle makes many calculations in his temple before the battle is fought. Plan ahead. Know your map. Know what you're getting into. Think of the situations that you're going to be coming up on and plan for that. Obviously, we don't have a temple to go study the game in before we're going to play. But you know what? Take those extra, take an extra second as you're running to the next base and think, you know, what's the best line of attack? Think what's the best, you know, approach that I can have. Where are the enemies going to be? Take that extra second and maybe communicate it. Tell your team where you're going to be going. I think I just sniped that guy again. Two T-backs. Go me. <laughs> uh, bring war material with you from home, but forage on the enemy. Thus the army will have food enough for its needs. Pick up those kits. Use the kits that you think are the most useful. That's why I use the recon kit. That's why a lot of people use the recon kit, because those recon balls are very valuable. This is a pretty awesome clip right here. This is pretty fun stuff. But you can always go in, and this is a great example of it. You can always go in and pick up the ammo kit. I need ammo. I'm going to go pick up the ammo kit. There's a bunch of ammo guys around me. Look at all these assault guys. Not throwing down the ammo. I go throw down the ammo. You know, same with the med kits. You can pick up med kits. You can pick up assault kits. Recon balls are usually, you know, if a recon is really playing a sniper, look at this great balls. I get the grenade, get this guy sniped. I don't know where I get killed. I get fucked. But, you know, that's why I like having the recon ball, picking up other things if I need it. Same with the engineer kit. The engineer kit, the rockets, and the recon balls are probably the most important things to have in situations. In war, let your great object be victory, not lengthy campaigns. Don't pad your KD. Don't sit there and, you know, it... it I guess if you're going for points, but you know, go for the win. Keep it real. Don't wear people down. People don't like getting killed 20, you know, 70 times in a match or something. And if somebody stays in for that long, I'm surprised. And that's what usually happens when people try and KD whore in this game is people end up just backing out because they get sick of it. And then you have an empty lobby. So you know what? If you feel like playing by yourself on one team, you know, it's 10 on one, then that's fine. You're not going to get any points then. So keep it real. Don't, you know, take forever. In the practical art of war, the best thing of all is to take the enemy's country whole and attack. To shatter and destroy it is not so good. Once again, there's no need to completely rape somebody. Beat him, beat him quick, beat him swift, beat him good. It'll show that you're a better player. If you take your time and then, oh, shoo, 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 and then you maybe go in and get a plan, not only will you have less chances of winning, you know, you'll have those more chances of making a mistake on those only couple tickets, you know, you have less than 20 tickets and then they go for it. I know people who do it. A lot of people do it. But you're going to get screwed more often than not. And if you take all your chances and you play swiftly, not only will the other team stick around and want to come back and beat you, but they'll also, you know, it just keeps the game happy for everybody. And it gives you a chance to take over the other people's cities in that sense. The rule is not to besiege walled cities if it can be possibly avoided. Don't run into the meat. Basic stuff there. The general, unable to control his irritation, will launch his men to assault like swarming ants. It, it kind of reminds me of the trickle effect. You don't want to just keep going, keep going, keep going. One at a time, one at a time, one at a time. Group together. Be strategic. Don't get irritated. Stick to your strategy. Work as a team. <clears throat> the skillful leader subdues the enemy's troops without any fighting. He captures their cities without laying siege to them. He overthrows their kingdom without lengthy operations in the field. Imagine winning a battlefield game without having to shoot anybody. And still being like a full battlefield game with full teams without having to shoot, that would be pretty freaking skillful. So if you think about it, the less shots that you have to take off, the less enemies you alert, the less confrontations and engagements that you have to engage in, and you still win, the better player I would say. And that kind of makes sense, and it gives you the more opportunities to win and the less chances of having a defeat or having you get killed. So think about that. He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. He will win who knows how to handle both superior and inferior forces. He will win whose army is animated by the same spirit throughout all its ranks. He will win who prepared himself, waits to take the enemy unprepared. He will win who has military capacity and is not, and is not interfered by the sovereign. 
don't want any freaking <laughs> server issues there, but it still makes sense, right? Those are some pretty basic stuff. I think you guys can understand the metaphors in that. What the ancients called a clever fighter is one who not only wins, but excels in winning with ease. Like I said, fighting with a large army under your command is in no way different from fighting with a small one. It is merely a question of instituting signs and signals. Communication is the most important thing in this game, just as in life, just as in warfare. There are not more than five musical notes, yet the combination of these five give rise, give rise to more melodies than can ever be heard. There's only a couple classes in Battlefield, and they create the Battlefield. They create the epic game that we have as Battlefield. There's only a few different classes, but they can be put and used in so many different ways that creates this epic chaos that we all are addicted to. In battle, there are not more than two methods of attack, the direct and indirect. And these two, in combination, give rise to endless series of encounters. The energy developed by good fighting men is the momentum of a round stove rolled down a mountain thousands of feet in height. Momentum, momentum, momentum. You keep taking those bases, keep taking them quick, they're not going to be able to get you back. I think I just got, oh, he teabagged me, he teabagged me. But they're not going to come back because we got the momentum. Even this game, this game's been real close. We've been going back and forth on these bomb sites, I, or these uh, objectives. If you haven't seen, I got a lot of flag caps. I've been all over this shit if you haven't been watching. So, Blake's attention. It's about to get real in these last, uh, these last few minutes. Get pretty intense in this gameplay if I don't remember. If I do remember correctly. Let's see here. The clever combatant imposes his will on the enemy but not, does not allow the enemy's will to be imposed on him. Be smart, choose your engagements wisely, and you will always come out on top. Have the right strategy and impose your will. Don't let, you know, if you know the enemy is going to come in a chopper, impose your will of trying to take down the chopper. Take the, take the offensive. Even on defense, now I'm not saying, you know, rush the defensive spawn, but take the offensive. You can be sure of succeeding in your attacks if you only attack places which are undefended. Flank, flank, flank. <laughs> if we wish to fight, the enemy can be forced to an engagement even though he'd be sheltered behind a, a high rampart and, and a deep ditch. Deep ditch. All we need to do is attack some other place that he will oblige to relieve. Go to plant that bomb, they're gonna freaking come out from their sniper spot. If they don't, then we get the bomb, we get the win, we didn't have to tap the engagement. Pretty simple. The spot where we intend to fight must not be made known, for then the enemy will have to prepare against a possible attack at several different points. This is key in hiding the points that you're flanking, and smoke is really crucial in these points. Flanking, put smoke down the middle, don't let them know where you're coming from. If you get spotted, you know, take it slow sometimes, move up as a team, communicate. communicate. Do not repeat the tactics which have gained you one victory, but let your methods be regulated by the infinite variety of circumstances. Circumstances, circumstances, be a situation situational player based on your kit, based on the game, based on what you're expecting from the other team, based on your strategies. Do not fall into the same role. I know you see me play the sniper rifle a lot, but to be honest, it's more when I'm recording. And this game was one, uh, to be honest, this is one of those games I played to record. And I don't normally do that that often, but I did, and it came out pretty decent, I think. But when I play to record, I usually play with the sniper rifle just because I like doing that the most. This guy gets bitched out. <laughs> But that's how it is, you know what I mean? And so, I do change it up. If you guys play with me a lot, you know that I honestly do not play that. I, I play the sniper when it needs to be played, and I play it sometimes for fun, but I switch it up a lot. Shotguns, M1 Grand, you know what I mean? Military tactics are likened to water, for water in its natural course once away from high places and hastens downward. So in war, the, the way is to avoid what is strong and strike at what is weak. Choose your battles wisely. He, he who can modify his tactics in relation to his opponent and their by succeed in winning may be called a heaven-born captain. Situation is important. Let your plans be dark and impenetrable at night, and when you move, fall like a thunderbolt. Strike hard, but don't let him see it beforehand. Ponder and deliberate. Ponder and deliberate before you make a move. When you surround an army, an army let an outlet free. Give them the chance that they think they're going to have it. Maybe don't trip cap. Give them a chance. Do not press a desperate foe too hard. They're going to back out. For it is precisely when a force has fallen into harm's way that is capable of striking a blow for victory. Be careful of the em empty team that you think's empty. Jump in, plant those bomb sites real quick. It happens all the time. So now, you guys, I must congratulate you first of all for making it to the end of this video, in which my team did win. I hope you guys actually watched the video because the game is pretty intense. If you like 25-minute videos, uh, I must congratulate you. If you know, if you have any concerns, questions, disagreements, agreements with anything I. Th 
said. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Keeping it real, you know how we do. 37 and 19. Till next time, ladies. Leon Trotsky, keep your panties on, ladies. We'll see you soon.